Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Christina. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. So what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today is kind of twofold. I asked you guys over on stories on Instagram if you would be interested in hearing more about how I plan out my novel studies with experience teaching English from pretty much fifth to 10th grade at this point, as well as homeschooling. I thought it might be helpful to just kind of hear my thinking be behind how I plan out my novel studies. But then also I wanted to give you my review of the Gather Round Homeschool novel mini study for Underground to Canada, how I'm using it, what I think of it, and then just some insight into how I plan novel studies. So first thing I will say is we are not finished with it yet, but we are doing Underground to Canada right now, and I have been loving it. I was unsure about it because there was a little bit of controversy surrounding it, just kind of like it's about the Underground Railroad, it's about slavery. It also does use the N-word. That's one of the things that's controversial about it. The other thing that's controversial about it is some have an issue with basically saying it kind of smooths over how bad slavery really was. And I can understand an issue with both of those points. As far as the use of the N-word, my thought is I understand why the author thought it was necessary to kind of depict and truly show like the young girl in this story heard others as well as herself referenced in that way regularly. And that was the reality for a child who was enslaved during slavery in America. So I don't have an issue with it being included. Does it make me uncomfortable? Yes. And so as a little bit of a sidebar, I will just say, I don't think we should have an issue with something just because it makes us uncomfortable. I think we should lean into that and explore, like, why does that make us uncomfortable? So that's just a little bit of a sidebar. I did want to kind of bring an awareness to the fact that that word is used in the book. I choose to not read that word out loud. However, my children do see it. They have a copy of the book. Um, and so they see it and they're aware of it and we've had conversations about it. And that brings me a little bit to talking about both the unit study from Gather Round that accompanies the novel, as well as some of the things that I bring in. I chose to do this during Black History Month for a couple of reasons. And so I'll talk to you a little bit about my planning and thinking, and then I'll really jump into the Gather Round unit study itself. So backtracking just a little bit for Martin Luther King Jr. Day, we analyzed both the I Have a Dream speech and letter from Birmingham jail both as a way to observe that day and really dig into not only the issues that were going on at that time, as well as how rhetoric or the art of persuasion or persuasive language was used in order to communicate effectively to the audience. So that was kind of like what we did leading up to this, just to give you a little bit of context. Do I think that's necessary for starting this unit study? Not at all. I just wanted to share that. That's how we did that. I actually did less prep work for this than I would typically do for a novel study that I was sort of like gathering things for. I wouldn't say that I'm sharing like what I've created from scratch in probably any of the videos that I'll share with you about novel studies, but how I select resources, how I put them together to really get like a variety of perspectives as well as like a variety of maybe skills and knowledge that I want my kids to be able to gain from um, doing the novel study. So I think of novel studies um, different than just a read aloud. So there's many times that we just do read alouds and all we do is read and discuss. And I think there's a ton of value in that. I don't think everything should be a novel study because I don't think that everything that you do with reading with your kids should be academic based. But I do think there is a lot of value and benefit from doing novel studies. If you're unfamiliar with Underground to Canada, it is a story about a young girl who was born into slavery and she is sold separate from her mother and taken to the deep south. She starts off in Virginia in her certain circumstance 
her enslavement was enslavement and it was horrific, but it was not as bad as what she had heard about and then ends up experiencing in the Deep South where she is sent. I'm going to not give any spoilers in case you want to find those things out on your own, but just to kind of give you some um, context for what this story is about. I want to talk about this novel study and then I'm going to kind of show you some of the resources that I'm pairing with it. It is not a lot that I'm pairing with it because this is so well done. I'm really impressed with this. Again, as someone who has education in English and English adolescent education experience teaching ELA and English grades five through 10 and homeschooling, I'm really impressed with how this was put together. I wasn't sure. So I was a little bit like waiting to see, super impressed with it. So first of all, it's beautiful. Like all of the gather round units, I mean, the artwork is beautiful. Of course, you always have your note to the teacher. It gives you lots of information about how to use it, how to get started, what's in here. It walks you through the parts of the student notebooks because there are, just like the other main gather round unit studies, there are student notebooks that align with pre-reader, lower elementary, upper elementary, middle school, and high school. And you always have the scope and sequence in all of the gather round units. I'm trying to give you like a quick overview just so that if you're not familiar with how the gather round units work, it'll give you an idea. And if you are familiar, it's not like, okay, I already know this. Table of contents breaks down what each lesson, each of the 20 lessons is about. And of course you have your lesson planning pages. So I don't always use these in the unit. Sometimes I do because I always have another planner, but just more planning pages here. And then always an accompanying book list with different levels of books. Okay, getting into the lessons themselves. Here's the way it's broken down. It starts with a prayer, which I absolutely love. I'll read to you this one. It says, Father, thank you that you created us in your image with no one person higher than another. Help us to have a heart for justice as we read this story, to learn from the things that have happened in the past and to learn to do what is right, even when it isn't what everyone else is doing. We invite you to be in our home and day today, Holy Spirit. So I love that. So because this is the first lesson, this section that says chapter summary, you haven't read anything yet, so there's not a chapter summary. It actually explains how to use that chapter summary section of the teacher's guide and all of the other lessons. So I love that. It's very user friendly. Even if you have zero teaching experience, zero homeschool mom experience. So this is great. I think no matter what your experience and then this prediction section does give some pre-reading predictions and also a place to write those down if you choose to. Then as you move on, there's a reading, just like the other unit studies, there's a reading from the teacher's guide. It gives you background information, context, and then it tells you to read chapter one. And then once you read it, there's more to do in that lesson. So each lesson doesn't start out with reading the chapter. Each lesson starts out with a review of the previous chapter, some discussion and analysis about that, and then kind of some intro to the next chapter. Then they have you read the chapter, and then there's a short reading, there's discussion questions, and then it prompts you to have them work in their student notebooks. But here's what I love, it's not just go off on your own now. Although you could do that if you think your child is ready for that. It gives a note to the teacher, it has where you can rate the chapter together as a family. And then it breaks down each of the sections that are in their student notebooks, even at the different levels. So they come up with a chapter title, they start to look into character, the plot, the setting, more about the setting, and then quotes and literary devices. As an English teacher, I love this. They have to analyze a quote, they have to select a quote, and they have to look for similes and metaphors and imagery for different chapters. If you're like, I don't know how to guide them in that because I wouldn't even know how to find those, it gives you examples of them and the page numbers. So like if they're having a hard time finding it, I don't just tell them, I say, I'll take a look at page one, two, four, and five. You'll find some similes there. You know, you can give them hints to help them find it as opposed to just, completely making them find it on their own or giving them the answer. So I really like that a lot. And there's always vocabulary and the vocabulary that they give you in that lesson is in preparation for the next chapter. So to help prepare them to understand the chapter better. So I think that that's really great. And you can have them completely look them up. 
and not give them these, or you can read through these together as a family and then have them copy them down in their own words in their student notebooks. So it's really wonderful. The other thing that is really cool about the student notebooks is it will have places for them to jot down like plot for that chapter, like what happened in the plot, what's happening with the characters, and then there will be prompts for them to go to the appendix in their student notebook where they have a plot diagram and they plug things in that way. The way that this was designed is genius because I find that students oftentimes struggle with that plot diagram. Like where do things go? Is it the exposition? Is it the rising action? Like what's the climax? What's the falling action? What's the resolution? And there is a line for every chapter. So it really, really helps their understanding of where things go on that plot diagram to really see that arc of the plot. So it's really, really cool. There is also a project that they select in the first few lessons where they're choosing to write a book report to write an essay about racism or to do a diorama of the setting. So they select it early on and then they complete it throughout the unit. There's also so much flexibility for how you wanna do that. Maybe you have an older child and you decide you're going to do a book report, you're going to do an, an essay on racism and we're gonna do a diorama together as a family. You have so much flexibility for how you decide to do that. There is also a writing track resource that you can buy that goes along with this unit for an additional $12. And so that's available too. If you're like, I wouldn't even know where to guide them. They're not ready for this writing. That really walks you through it. So that is an optional upgrade as well. You buy the digital for most units other than the ready to read units, which I almost wish I would have bought digitally because then I could have used them with my youngest too when they get there. But the print is really, really nice too. So you just kind of have to weigh it out price-wise and if you plan to use them in the future again with more than one child and all of those things. So that is the unit. I absolutely love it. Definitely ask me down below if you have questions about the unit itself, the book, the student notebooks, and I'd be happy to answer. I just want to share a few resources that I've pulled that you could use with this unit study or just on their own if you're looking for some resources either for Black History Month or, or just whenever, because Black History isn't just something that should be studied during Black History Month. I love Black History Month for the reminder to be more intentional about it, but Black History is just history. It's part of the history of our country. So we should always, I really think the best way is just to normalize studying black history and not even necessarily calling it that throughout the normal year and just this is us studying history and biographies and all of those things. So I want to share with you my favorite things right now that I'm using. This I found and I got really excited about it for a couple of reasons. This is In Defiant, Runaways from Slavery in New York's Hudson River Valley. So we live in upstate New York. So for us, this was a great way to sort of really have this hit home. This entire book or most of this entire book is actual advertisements from slave masters trying to find their runaway slaves. And then they're transcribed in regular text next to it to make it easier to read because some of them aren't the easiest to read. Some of them are easier to read than others. There's a giant book. This is just the runaway slaves in just this specific geographical location in just this specific time period. So it really hits home. It also connects with this book if you're choosing to use it that way because it's about the Underground Railroad. So this is just a really amazing resource. I highly recommend it. This is linked in my Amazon shop and I'll link it down below if you're interested. This is just, if you are studying slavery, if you're studying American history, if you're doing a novel study that would align with this, this is just, it just makes it real, you guys. Like to hear how they're described, it's just, it's unbelievable. So highly recommend that. These I've shared in the past, but I wanna share them again because Every time I pull them back out and start using them again, I'm like, these really are such beautiful, amazing books. So Little Leaders, Exceptional Men in Black History and Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History. And I'll just show you one of the pages because they're just so sweet. And these are good for all the way through like your elementary age kids, all the way up through high school. Even me as an adult, I would sit here and read this because it's super interesting. They are one page bio, so it's not really long. 
And then if you got super interested in a certain person, you could always do more research, but it's just really great. And so we do one a day of each of these and my kids love it, I love it. It's just really, really interesting and a great way to see really how black people who have made like major contributions to our world and to our country that may not have gotten the notoriety that they deserve because of social norms and constructs and slavery and post-slavery and all of those things. So these are really awesome. Along that same line, I'm not sure how I have shared these before, I love these books in general and really for me have nothing to do with Black History Month, but these are similar to the Little Leaders, but these are 50 true stories of daring women of God, so courageous world changers, and brave heroes and bold defenders, 50 true stories of daring men of God. And so what I like about this is while these don't necessarily shy away from each person's faith. I know a lot of secular resources do. Like growing up, I had no idea that Harriet Tubman was a woman of serious faith and she was following God's leading in escaping and helping other slaves escape. I had no idea. And that's because it's not really something that's given attention or it's purposely left out. Not really sure which one of those, but I could go with purposely left out. These highlight specifically like how they're doing it for God. Now these are not just African-American people, but there are African-American people in here. So what I usually do with it being Black History Month, I find the bios that are specifically about black people. And then throughout the rest of the year, we just use these in general. But for, for example, here's Katherine G. Johnson. So she, like her life is really highlighted in Hidden Figures, the book and movie you may be familiar with. So I love these as well. I'll link these down below as well. And then obviously, any books that highlight black history no matter how old or how recent and i really think it's important to have a balance between like the real struggle and oppression of slavery and post-slavery even up until present day but then and then really following that line how that past has influenced everything after it up until the present you know, like it really is important to see like, okay, post slavery, like the slaves are freed, but then what? With no education, with no job, with no land, with no inheritance, like where does that lead them, leave them? And then how does that affect the next generation of black people and the next generation and all of those things? And, you know, Jim Crow and segregation and the civil rights movement, just really seeing the big picture and then also being able to do a deep dive into different aspects of that. So I really think that's important as well, as well as stories of triumph, right? Like happy stories, like black joy. Like it's not all about racism and oppression, although you cannot ignore that. I think it's important to just have normal picture books that highlight normal black characters right? And so we have tons of those that we love as well. And I always try to fill my shelves up with diverse characters of all different races and cultures, but I try to be more intentional about it during Black History Month and really take stock of like, how well have I been doing this? Which I would do this anyway, I'm sure, but with three children who are both black and white, I really want to make sure that I'm intentional about them feeling represented in what we're studying. Moving forward, I will have probably a few unit studies that I wanna share with you that I've started to put together that don't necessarily have novel studies or maybe they have novel studies that weren't, not necessarily that they weren't enough, but they didn't cover everything that I wanted to cover in that study. And so I have a couple more that I'll probably be sharing with you guys in the next few weeks. So comment down below if you're interested in seeing more about how I put novel studies together. Let me know if you've read Underground to Canada, if you've done the Gather Around unit, if you have other Black History resources or resources that you think would go along with any of this and, and you want to share those down below, definitely do that. If you're new to my channel, I would love if you would stick around, subscribe, Introduce yourself down below so I can say hi and get to know you guys. If you're not already following me over on Instagram, you can follow me there at rooted underscore home life. I love to connect with you guys over there too. I show more like day to day life and stuff like that in posts and reels and stories. And we can talk in DMs and all of that. I've mentioned it a few times already on my channel and over on Instagram, but we are getting even closer 
to the homeschool conference that I am going to be a part of. It's a virtual homeschool conference and I will be sharing more about it very soon. It launches February 21st and I am so excited to share it with all of you. I hope to see you soon in one of my next videos and until next time, stay rooted.